everybody. Hope everybody is doing fine today. We are going to try something a little bit different today. Um, I am going to just be clipping a, a, a pasture and there's actually several things I want to show to you on this video but uh, I am going to use Lady and Buck together. Lady and Buck are two horses that I used to use a lot years ago. They were my main team for for quite a few years and they were a really good working team and so I'm going to put those two back together for the first time and probably I bet it's been five years since I've worked them as a team. They've worked together in three horse hitches and four horse hitches before since then but um but to actually work them as a team I bet it's been five years since I've pitched them together. So I will talk about that as we go along. Um just a little background on Lady. We'll start with Lady. Um she was we got her when she was just uh, um, just barely a year old, and uh, she had been well started as far as leading. Um, the people that we got her from really took nice care of her, and uh, so we got her then, and we've had her ever since, and she's been a really good horse for us. Um, I've actually tried to get her bred a couple times, it's just because I've had some people ask about that, and uh, with we've never been able to, we haven't tried really hard, but we never had any luck getting her bread. Um, she would just actually not stand for the stud. So um, we're sort of thinking maybe now with the Suffolk Colts that I have, they're both stallions, um, next summer I might attempt to get her bread by them. Now to me it's a little bit risky because she's got, she's starting to get a little bit older now and she's you know, 13, 14 years old and this will be her first colt. Um, but it's definitely doable, it happens a lot, um, but uh, uh, that's sort of what we're thinking with her. So we'll get her harnessed up and then we'll go on to Bill. I did want to tell you also though, um, at the end of this video, we've actually, uh, my, the girls have actually got the t-shirts made up that we had talked about a few different times. And so now we're um, ready to be able to sell these t-shirts which is great. Um, so at the end of this video, um, one of the girls is going to explain, show you the t-shirts and then explain how you might be able to purchase them. So wait to the end of the video and you can see that. So we will get Lady harnessed up and then we'll go on to Buck and I wanna tell you a little bit about his background also. Okay, so now we have Buck, I'm getting ready. Now Buck is my oldest horse I have. He is, I honestly don't know exactly how old he is, but I know he's a, a 20 year old. So he's at an age where you would think he'd be all done working and, and retired. Um, but he is not at all. Some days I think he's, a, as a, he's like a four year old. He's just got so much energy. Um, he's a little bit hard to keep weight on, but not too bad. Um, he, when he works, it's difficult to keep him at a, just a slow, steady pace. He's just a very nervous, high, strong horse, but I try to use that to my advantage and get a lot of work out of him, but I've just got to be careful because 
he is a little bit hard to keep the weight on um, if he works too long like that. So I just have to work him in a period of, shorter period of time and it works great for all of us. Also, being an older horse, he has, I'm sure, some arthritis problems. And just like all older horses do and all older people generally get to get that way. And the more they're worked, definitely, the better they are. So I try to keep him working some. So like I said, him and Lady used to be uh, the main, my main team for years, and they did so good together. I'm curious to see how well they do today because I haven't hitched them up together as a team for five years. You would think they just go back into the same habit of doing good, and they may, but you just never know until you try. And so I'm gonna try that and I'll let you see how well they do that first time from not being worked together for five years. A um, little background on Buck. Uh, we bought him probably 10 years ago from a guy um, not too far from here, and we went to look at him. And fortunately, this was back when horse prices were a lot cheaper. And uh, we went into the barn to see him, and oh my goodness, he looked nice. He had uh, actually a long flowing mane that actually went on both sides, and the guy just brushed him and really took good care of him as far as, as, far as grooming. Um, I don't think he ever hitched him up to drive. Him, he had told a little bit about his background at that point and said he came from a, a place that might have abused him a little bit and had little troubles with him. So we knew we were getting to, into troubles there, and, and he, was, he was a handful, and he still is. But he's been a really, really good horse. So, um, and even now at his old age, I feel he looks, he looks really good still. So um, we'll hitch him up and we'll see how he goes today. Okay, now we're ready to hit you up. I'm always pleased after he clips a pasture here because we have some thistles that keep coming back, although they're much less than they used to be. I think it's because he keeps them clipped down and they haven't gone to seed yet. So this should help even more. Okay, you better shut the heat because I see the cows right here. Okay.
catch it down. You must have got it. Don't want to touch that this morning. Uh, that's probably grounded out because of the rain. Somewhat. Have to go back, shut it off, and fix it. This whole section up here is just loaded with rocks, as you can see. I cannot go in here with the horse mower, and uh, I would just smash it. So all I'm able to do is back here. This mower, as you can see, is not very sharp, but uh, it's not my good mower. It's my mower I use for the pasture, and it's kind of rough on them anyway, so it wasn't that thick, so I knew I'd get by with this. I was very pleased with the horses. They just seemed to work so good together. Jim's fixing the fence. I shut the fencer off, and I love that look Lady has. She's always looking at something. But they're being really good. I decided I'd take some time and see about getting the grass underneath the electric fence. And this is one of those jobs that are quite a challenge to, to do it. Um, I will swing in underneath the fence and then just before we hit the fence post, I have to stop, back up, and swing out and around, sidestep them around, and go back into the next section between posts and cut that. And then make sure I stop in time before I hit the next fence post. It's a very challenging job. If any of you have horses have never tried this, it might be a good thing to try to see how well your horses sidestep and how well they mind. Here I'm coming into the corner and I won't get too fussy and do that good of a job, I'll just swing around, but sometimes I'll back in there and try and get more of the, the grass out of the corners, but not today. You will notice on this mow machine I don't have a swath board on. I have the end of the cutter bar, but on my mower that I use for the hay fields I have a long, fairly long swath board which pulls the hay 
a way so there's a path for the horse to walk in. That's really nice and I like that a lot, but when you're backing up, going around these fence posts and such, it's nice that it's not there because sometimes if you don't pick your cut bar up high enough, you'll end up grabbing it and then it's not good. So it's just easier to go without it in this situation where you're in these places. When I'm cutting underneath the wire, I'm, I have to do an awful lot of backing up. And when I'm backing up, I can't lift my cutter bar up all the way because it will hit the electric wire that's there. That's why it's better not to have that swath board. Okay, I'm finishing up this little pasture piece and now we're going to go to myself cultivating the corn for the last time. And as I'm doing this, I want you to pay close attention to which horses I'm using on the cultivator. Because later on, when the girls come on with their contest that they have, you need to know which horses I'm using. So just pay close attention to which horses I'm using while I'm cultivating corn. So here I am cultivating in my weedy cornfield. Now you have to remember this corn is organic corn so there is no spray involved so the only way I'm keeping the weeds down is with the cultivators. But anyways, um, as we're showing you this, you need to try to figure out which horse, which horses I have here on the cultivator. And that is for a contest coming up. So, anyways, this corn is getting pretty high. Um, I had talked about this on an earlier video to see if what people thought as to whether I should cultivate it again. I decided to do it one more time, or at least start it. And as I was, was cultivating, I felt I was doing no damage to the corn. Um, as with the cultivator, it would bend right over when I went over it and it wasn't an issue. But the horses were doing a lot of chewing as we walked down the rows. They would swing right in and grab the corn because it was so high it came right to their mouths. And I, I guess I'd have to say if if there's a way to stop that is to have your horses really full before you head out there to cultivate corn. I've seen some old pictures of farmers that would put some sort of a nose bag on them also to stop them from eating the corn. But I didn't have any nose bags that would work and so I just decided not to cultivate too much. I just did it for a little while and I decided to call it quits. And uh, I feel that it's high enough now and the weeds aren't that bad that it should make a fairly good crop the way it is. So anyways, that's what we have for today. to share with you some very exciting news. We finally have t-shirts made. Um, so they are now for sale on our website, which is workinghorseswithjim.com, and the link will also be in the description below. So we're going to be shipping them worldwide, so the shipping costs will vary based on where you live in the world. For now, we're just starting with these two styles. So the team of horses, and it says Real Horsepower Working Horses with Jim. And Working Horses with the Jim. Lady. And there are a couple of different color options, but we wanted to start small first and see how things went. And we're hoping to add different options such as hats and calendars, etc. in the future. Let us know in the comments below if you have any specific requests. So as Dad mentioned earlier, um, we're kicking this off with a contest. Um, so we want to give away one of our shirts. <clears throat> so if you were watching as the horses were cultivating earlier in the video, 
Um, hopefully you were looking to see which um, horses dad was actually using. He was being tricky. So um, if you think you know who they were, then put it in the comments below. And then this Friday, which is July 23rd, we're going to be picking a winner out of um, the people who guessed correctly. And um, the winner will get a shirt for sent to them um, of their choosing. So best of luck guessing. And if you're interested in purchasing a shirt, check out our website. Hope you all have a fantastic day. Yeah.